All right, Kirk, so, man, you're retiring. <laughs> man. <laughs> so was it more about just, hey, you feel like you made your place in the game, or it was just like, hey, I got to get out of here this time? No, it, it, was a, it was a tough decision, you know. I mean, um, I love the game. I still love the game. But I think it comes to a point now where, you know, my kids are getting older. Uh, my daughter's in middle school now, and, you know, that's all she's known is baseball. So, you know, I felt like it was the right time to – you know, become a full-time dad and husband and just start the next chapter of my life. You know, it's a, it wasn't an easy decision. You know, we talked, my wife and I talked a lot, you know, with the kids. We talked a little bit to some extent, but, um, yeah, we just felt like it was the right time. Okay, so growing up, California guy. Hawaii guy. Hawaii. Yeah. Okay, so I got to ask you, in Hawaii, that may be a little different then. <laughs> so who were some of your favorite baseball players just like growing up? Yeah, you know, that's funny. You know, people ask me that, you know, I never really – you know, watch too much baseball. You know, Hawaii, you don't, we don't get, you know, the chance. There, there was no MLB network, uh, MLB extra innings, you know, in Hawaii. Um, the only team that was on was the Braves. So it was the Eddie Perez, the, you know, Chipper Jones, the Terry Pendletons, you know, obviously Maddox, Glavin, Smoltz, um, you know, guys like that. You know, those are the kind of the guys that I watched, you know, and, and I love. And so when I got to play in Atlanta for those two years, uh, it was like, it was like kind of in heaven, you know, I got Chipper Jones, you know, I, I saw Chipper, you know, when I went back to Atlanta this year and, uh, you know, I got to talk to Chipper behind um, home plate and I'm like, God, I'm talking to Chipper Jones, you know, and, you know, we'd be in the clubhouse and Tom Glavin be sitting in there talking to us and, you know, I t Eddie Perez was my coach for two years for crying out loud. It was unbelievable, you know, it was so cool. Walt Weiss was my bench coach, you know, it was, it was, it was awesome. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a cool, cool experience. So... Your catcher, being a Mount Rushmore, you know what the Mount Rushmore is. If you could put four catchers, in your opinion, on the Mount Rushmore, who would be the four catchers that you put on the Mount Rushmore? Well, obviously you got Pudge. Um, I'm, I'm going modern day guys that I, I, I grew up watching. You know, Pudge, obviously. Um, to me, Yachty. To me, Yachty's probably the GOAT. You know, I think he's the greatest. You know, Yachty is. Um, who else we got? Pudge, Yachty. Ah, oh, man. For me, Jason Kendall. I love Jason wow. Kendall. He was my guy oh, yeah. in Oakland. Uh, you know, I came up with him. So Jason Kendall, and then. Um, What's the names? I thought we got Buster Posey. We got Joe Mauer. Well, he said more modern. Yeah. Modern. You so know, I have to say too, I, I played with Mike Piazza my my uh, right. first year in the big leagues. You know, I play. I got to play with Mike. So I mean, greatest ca hitting catcher in baseball ever. You know, so I got to go with Mike. Mikey P. I like it. So, being a catcher, man, the fact that you're you catching for a guy like Shohei Otani, and in the video game we call that a cheat code, a guy that can hit 40 home runs and literally get 15 wins. When you're being able to catch that type of player, what comes in your mind? Because I'm pretty sure you never thought in our lifetime we would have a Babe Ruth type guy. I, I feel like it's not fair. I mean, I feel like he's just playing around out there most of the time. And when he wants to, then you see the 101 come out. Nasty slider, nasty split. Um, he's just special, man. I, I mean, it's just very fortunate, humbled, honored, whatever you want to say, to be able to share the field with this guy. I mean, it's it's a it's a impressive feat what he's doing and what he's able to do the last couple of years. And uh, I'm just happy to be able to watch him on a nightly basis. That's for sure. I love it. I love it. So one thing that you were able to do in your baseball career is be a champion. That moment when it happened, that national team. I mean, I had to go back the other day and I just looked at that roster. Scherzer, yourself. You know, young Juan Soto, who's still young, um, just all those guys. Can you talk about that moment in winning that World Series? Oh, yeah, that was, um, you know, easily the best moment of my career. I mean, that's what we play this game for. We play the game to win the World Series. And uh, it was such a long season, you know. And when I was there and I was sitting there, and I'm like, man, I'll probably never, ever get here again. You know, this at this moment in time, game seven of the World Series, you know, it was, I mean, it was a long season, you know. I mean, Halloween was the next day, I think, for crying out loud. So it was a long season. And, um you know, that feeling, you know, you just felt like you're running on air. It was just unbelievable. It was just a weird feeling. You know, you just, I can't believe we won the World Series. That's kind of how I felt. And uh, it was such a cool moment and special moment and something that, you know, in baseball, you, you remember forever. Okay, so for the next view question of the day, what is your favorite baseball movie of all time? Oh, Sandlot. And I've probably watched it about 100 times because my son just loves baseball and he watches Sandlot. I like, that, I like that. So, if we had a song named after you, and I'm pretty sure you've seen Edwin Diaz with the oh, with the yeah. thing. But let's just say there's your walk-up song. You can pick any artist to do the song. 
Who would you want to do your walk-up song that's named after you? Oh. Oh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm obviously my roots in Hawaii. You know, the probably one of the most iconic, maybe well-known Hawaiian singers of all time is Breda Is. And you know, he sings somewhere over the rainbow and stuff. But there's a song. It's a Hawaii 78. It's just. It's kind of like a chant that sings about Hawaii and stuff. I mean, that just gives me chills whenever I hear that song played. I love Last question. So, I'm a video game player. The first time that you saw yourself on a video game, what did you think? Because I don't know if you know this, I have friends that do home run derby. You're kind of like a cheat code in the home run derby. <laughs> um, but the first time that you saw yourself on a video game, I believe it be the show. Um, what did you think about when you saw that? That's surreal. You know, you never think about you're going to be on a video game as a kid. You know, you're like, ah, oh, this is cool. But, you know, having my son, they, he loves MLB the show. And he gets to play and, you know, I, I'm in the game. It's, uh, it's a pretty surreal feeling, I tell you that much. It's pretty cool. All right, well, perfect. Congratulations on your career. I'm glad I finally got you, man. And yeah. look good looking. I feel like, man, we're going to have to get you on the podcast soon, man. Talk yeah, to you. Sure. Uh, I appreciate you. So appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.